I just had a couple of molds taken off my back, our daughter said, when we saw her in California a few years ago. It's really hard for me to clean the wound myself and put the bandages back on. Would you mind doing it, Mom? Well, of course I wouldn't mind. In fact, I was flattered to be asked. So I was ready when our 27-year-old daughter peeled off the bandages and I looked at her back. Standing there, swabbing her back with soap, then water, then Vaseline, I was suddenly overcome. I don't know how it happens to all mothers, but this is how it happened to me. You carry a fetus, then a baby for months. You nourish it with your own widening body. Then one day you give birth. You hold your baby, you nurse her. As the weeks and months pass, you and your husband do everything for her. You feed her, bathe her, diaper her. You control her whole world. In fact, you are her whole world. Your baby becomes a toddler. Maybe like us, you have another child. Years pass, and you're pretty sure you and your husband never finish a conversation or even a sentence. <laughs> Cheerios are permanently stuck to the ceiling. The floor is squishy. And someone small is always banging a spoon on a high chair or climbing the bookcases like they were the Himalayas. <laughs> Having a child is like installing a bowling alley in your brain. <laughs> My husband read that somewhere. I don't know who wrote it, but the author is a genius. We quoted him all the time at our house. Uh, when my husband and I had time, we recorded our family's height on the back of the pantry door. We were measuring how much they were growing, we told our children, and how much my husband and I were shrinking. <laughs> When we had the energy, we hired a babysitter and went out for the evening. Sometimes we were so exhausted we could hardly wait to come home <laughs> and fall asleep on the couch with the TV still blaring. This is not a joke. More years passed and our lives gradually grew calmer. We could take our eyes off our children for a few minutes Without being terrified, they torched the house or impaled themselves on salad forks. <laughs> Our kids weren't as wild, and we weren't as frantic as we used to be. Looking back, I realize when our children were young, my husband and I revolved around the house where they were. We always knew where they were. We always knew who they were with. Our schedules were demanding and, and exhausting, but we had some kind of control. As they grew older, our children came and went more independently, playing in the neighborhood, rollerblading, going to school to sleepovers. My husband and I were the ones who were more fixed and static. And our kids were bogged around us in orbits that got bigger and bigger. We were needed, but not as much, not as constantly. That closed tight circle of you and your children is outgrown slowly, then with increasing speed. Some years I felt the most important actions my husband and I took were to step back and give our daughter, then her brother, more room. Their worlds expanded far beyond us to college, different cities, other countries. <coughs> we were affectionate, but still we were treated physically. A hug, a kiss, a hand squeeze, that's all. Your child becomes her own person. She doesn't need you hovering over her, touching her, pulling her to you. She needs to leave. I stood behind my grown daughter, marveling at her strong, beautiful back. The wounds were small with funny black stitches. 
It wasn't the blood or gore that overwhelmed me. It was just this kaleidoscope of memories, this primal, fierce wave of love and protectiveness and deep pride. I couldn't stand to feel it for too long. I had to step back. I patched my baby up with clean bandages. Then I sent her back out into the world.